Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. We're reading the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus is warning at the end that we are to choose the narrow gate and walk the narrow and difficult path to life and to be wary of the false prophets people who do not bear the fruit of the faith they profess now he tells us that there will be those who will come to the judgment who have operated as Christian leaders or as God's people who Jesus will say I never knew you even though they are full of religious works. Jesus will say, you are the ones who practice lawlessness, whereas they will have spent their lives thinking that they have been doing the will of God, and they will be surprised because they have been so completely deceived by the enemy. Let's read from verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. And may the Lord bless his word to us. Well, you'll understand that last phrase even today if you listen to the Jewish commentary, how they quote one authority or another authority, but no one will take responsibility for the position of their own whereas Jesus was speaking directly not quoting anybody else speaking as if he had the answer he's speaking about in yesterday's reading that we will know false prophets by their fruit and he goes on from this to say that not everyone who says Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven those who enter the kingdom of heaven are those who do the will of my father in heaven and the will of my father in heaven is represented in these words of mine that he's just given so the fruit that we shall look for in a believer's life is evidence of a lifestyle conditioned by the sermon on the mount now we're not going to find anybody who is perfect but we'll find people who hear these words of mine and do them they are seeking holiness they are seeking to be like God the false prophets will be pointing to external things, they will be pointing to their works and the works are things like preaching we prophesied in your name we cast out demons in your name, we did wonders in your name and Jesus will say I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. For the false prophet will depend on an external sign, and he will say, well, uh, you must follow me because I can do this, and will have a, a sign which has got nothing to do with righteousness. The scriptures talk in another place, a lying sign, a lying wonder. It is something that we can't easily explain, and uh, may well represent spiritual forces at work, but it is not the work of God. Because Jesus says the person who is doing the work of God will be listening and doing the things that I have said. In the Sermon on the Mount, 
Jesus has nowhere told us to cast out evil spirits. Jesus hasn't even told us to go and prophesy in his name in this passage. The proclamation of the gospel comes later as people ask us, why are you different? He hasn't commanded us to do wonders in his name. What he has commanded us to do is to walk a life of righteousness, of holiness, of godliness. A life that is lived appropriately in relation to God. Our prayers are not pretend prayers, but they are, represent a real relationship with God. An attitude which is hungering and thirsting for righteousness a very deep sense of doing that which is right and avoiding that which is wrong. No convenient cheating. And in terms of our relationships with one another, doing unto others as you would have them do to you. No retaliation, no punishing people, but doing good to people. In all these areas that Jesus has addressed, in attitude to material things, to have an attitude of dependence upon God, trusting God and not trying to rely on our own resources. Because life is full of challenges. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. That rock is Jesus, we're told in Corinthians. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Your life and my life, we will experience the floods, the winds, the rain, challenging our life. Things will happen in our lives which will challenge the whole basis of our life. And if we have depended on material things, a bomb will land, or a bank will go bust, or there will be a war, or there will be something and our security will be swept away. But if our security is in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not in material things, then those material things can be taken away, but our security is still sound. It is in Jesus Christ the Lord. Everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. It's much easier to ignore Jesus' words and to do what we want ourselves and each go our own way. As the song says, do your own thing. But when the floods come, the rain descends, the winds blow upon your life, upon your house, it will fall, and Jesus says, great was its fall. So there are two ways to live. The narrow road, which follows the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the broad road, which goes some other way follows the crowd there are people who come in as false prophets and they will seek to have people following after them they will draw people after them by the great words that they preach and the miracles that they perform but Jesus says don't look at those kind of signs the fruit of their life the good that it comes out of their life is the way that you will notice those who are truly mine. So the challenge for us is to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and to do them. Where do we begin? We must enter in at the narrow gate. The narrow gate is Jesus. Entering in is to believe in him as opposed to believing in ourselves, believing in our own resources, or believing in some other person who would stand up and say he is the way to God. There is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who's given himself as a ransom. He is the mediator because he is the ransom for our sin. He is the propitiation for our sin. He bore our sin in his own body on the tree. No other man that you might follow, no matter how spectacular his signs are, has paid the price for your sin. Just Jesus. So hear these words of mine and do them, Jesus says. Be a wise man. Build your house on the rock.